Welcome to How to Cook for Your Kids. This event is sponsored by PayPal. Are you looking for ways to support your friends, family, or neighbors? PayPal makes it easy to help others who are having a tough time right now. With peer-to-peer -peer payments, you can send money quickly to your loved ones, whether they are nearby or far away. With money pools, you can easily collect funds from many different people to help your community. And with Donate, you can contribute to help support the cause of your choice. Download the PayPal app to start helping today. The host would like me to unmute. Like, is this our life now? Um, anyway, I'm Kim Severson. I'm a food correspondent with the New York Times and uh, welcome to my house. Um, I have been spending a lot of time in the kitchen like I know all of you have, uh, cooking almost every meal. And for those of you who have kids like I do, it becomes an extra chore, also an extra joy because there's kind of nothing more fun than cooking with your kid, um, especially if you can get them to clean up. Um, but tonight, uh, we're really excited to be joined by Ted Allen, who's host of the TV show Chopped and the more popular show at my house, Chopped Junior, uh, to talk about kids and cooking. Welcome, Ted. Are you there? Ted, I, am, I, am, I am here. You I showed am up. Hi. Yeah, I didn't I wish think I, I was going to, I wasn't going to miss it. Well, I, I wish I could offer you something to drink, but I'll, I'll give you a virtual beverage of some kind. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like a virtual gin and tonic, please. Okay. Oh, will just get right on that. Um, <laughs> so first of all, just to our audience, thank you all for tuning in. You can submit questions anytime using the um, Q&A feature uh, on Zoom. And uh, when you do that, please go ahead and put your name and um, the town that you're from, because we like to mention that and shout out to different people who are, who are watching. Um, also, this is being recorded. So if you're hiding from somebody or something, this may be the time you don't want to, you want to click off. But um, anyway, so well, let's start talking a little bit about, um, about kids and cooking. Now you were just telling me you're, you have uh, uh, nieces and nephews that you bring mm -hmm. in to cook for, but you have been watching many kids cook for many years. How long have you been doing Chop Junior? Uh, junior specifically, I can't remember when that started, but Chopped itself has been going for 11 years and we're north of 750 episodes. So that's amazing. I think maybe it's is working. Right. Yeah, no, it's listen, it's, it's <laughs> on a lot at our house, um, but you guys haven't been Thank shooting you. lately. So what happened and how are you, you would be right in the middle of production right now, right? We would be, we were supposed to start about a month and a half ago and obviously things changed. Uh, the good news is they've got a plan in place. We're, we, we have to do some shooting. We need to take the show outside of New York. So we've got a couple of different locations, I think one in Maine and one in Tennessee, um, where we will get a new season going. Um, right. We don't want to leave, we don't want to, we don't, we don't like to leave people without premieres. All right. And you all are good. You're a pretty tight team, right? When you're, I mean, you guys have, your crew's been together a long time, right? We, uh, you know, I, it, it feels like such a cliche to say that our crew is family, but it really is such a tight, professional, sharp, we finish each other's sentences group of people. It's just a great place to work. And, and that when everybody knows how to do everything so well, it's just a, a real pleasure. Right. It's, all, and, it's, also, it's also a pleasure, by the way, I'm growing a mullet, which is, this is a very different I know. You're like my people with the mullet. What are you doing there? <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's right. Hey, we're all one. Yeah, I'm you look say, good. I'm gonna, yeah. you know, if, if, a, if a professional had styled this, I might even have feathered hair, which I used to love back in the 70s. All so. Right. And when you were on Queer Eye, you weren't, you, they would never have let you get away with that, I'm sure. So uh, I'm not sure. But um, I, I think after this, I have a, here's my prediction. Okay. I believe we are going to see a massive resurgence in 70s hairstyles. And I'm down with it. Okay. I'm totally, I'm All down. Right. I think that'd be cool. See, people, you turn in, you tune in to the Times to find the fashion tips as well as the food. So let's, well, we'll see if you're right. <laughs> we'll see if you're right. Now, I'm really, I want to talk about cooking with kids. You've seen kids come through um, uh, with varying skills, obviously. Um, and are you, is there, is there a, a, a commonality to, to, to the kids and their cooking ability? Are there some fundamentals that every kid who comes on has that parents can think about in terms of, 
if they want to make their kids a good cooks, what are some of the fundamental skills that they should be working on? Well, I mean, everybody's completely different, just as every kid is completely different. And we and Chop Jr. uses people from the age of nine to the age of 14. A lot happens between nine and 14. Yes, it does. We, we, we get a lot. We, I mean, a lot of these kids are extremely small. I mean, very, very, which change, you know, I mean, small enough that they, they have to be tall enough that their heads will show above the counter or at least. Right. I mean, I'm not on TV, but I could... I can guess that that's important. Okay. And uh, it, it's, it's interesting. I think that kid, I've always loved cooking since I was a kid. And it started with those boxed cake mixes and making hamburgers and simple pizzas. Mm -hmm. uh, but kid, kids today know a ton. And some of that's because of places like Food Network. And some of that is just because cooking is fun. And it's always been fun, uh, especially when you, you're doing it for leisure. And kids generally are. It's also a great way for, for a kid to get the food he, that he or she wants. You know, if you want chocolate right. chip cookies and you make them, then there they are. Right. I think this whole idea that, oh, I have, you know, children are such picky eaters. And I, I think they're just maybe developing. I mean, I think there's certainly some kids who are hard, but I, I think it's just a matter of them developing their taste. Right. And I, I can remember when, um, you know, the idea that this seemed like this great, we'll, we'll send kids into the garden and they'll grow their own food and then they will eat their vegetables. That actually worked. I mean, I think if a kid grows a vegetable, they're much more interested in trying it, right? 100%. I think getting kids involved in definitely gardening, which, uh, but also the shopping, the meal planning, um, allowing them to be participants in this as opposed to just recipients um, is really important. And when it comes to making sure that the kids get their nutrition, which is obviously very important, um, forcing, I have a good story about what happens when you force a kid to eat something he doesn't want to eat. Okay. And, and that kid is me. And I was about 10 or 12 years old. Both of my parents are from the South and they're, so our, our grandparents lived in Orlando and Panama City, respectively. We were in Panama City. I was 10 or 12. Uh, my grandma cooked lima beans. I hated lima beans. My dad said I had to eat them. And I, this is one of the biggest triumphs of my life. I realized that I could take one lima bean at a time, pop it in my mouth like an aspirin, and chug sweet tea, and I will have eaten the lima bean without having gotten that excessive mushiness. Now, let me say, I love beans now. I really do. Yeah. But I think that what that speaks to is my grandmothers at the time when they made lima beans, they cooked them to death. And a lot of people did. I'm talking about the 70s here. Mm -hmm. A lot of people did. And we know so much more now about, you know, a lot of people grew up hating Brussels sprouts, but maybe that's because they weren't being cooked as, right. to the best they could be cooked. Right. I mean, kids like, like anybody like delicious food. So if you give them delicious food, they're going to, they're going to get to it. What did you think about, and I think this trend is on the wane, but that notion that we were hiding, not we, but there was a trend to hide food in other foods. So there would be a uh, sweet potato mac and cheese, and then the kid wouldn't know they were eating mac and cheese or, you know, putting oh. spinach and chocolate chip and ice cream or whatever. I, I feel, I feel like we're like, you don't want to start lying to your kids about food like that. But on the other hand, there are a lot of parents who felt like there's no other way I'm going to get my kid to eat a vegetable. Uh, yeah. It seems a little bit disingenuous to basically lie to your kids about what you're feeding them. But on the other hand, sometimes a, a food like that, I mean, and a sweet potato also isn't really, I mean, it's really sweet. There's a lot of sugar in sweet potatoes. Um, yeah. I, I, think, yeah. I think there are ways to find vegetables like that and to use vegetables like that, that a kid is also going to find irresistible. But I think it's important to start early, as you alluded a moment ago, and get the kids involved from the beginning of the process and oh. zero in on things that they do like and find ways to make them more help, you know, better for them. Spanish right. and this is, is pretty good. Well, there you go. And at Tara from Burlingham, Cal Bur Burlingame, California just asked, she's a nine-year-old who loves vegetables, but just doesn't know it yet. Um, and can they hide the vegetables in her food or encourage her, how to, how to encourage her to eat more of them? But I think you're saying like, say, okay, you're going to get to pick the dinner tonight out of the garden. You pick three vegetables that we're going to make something out of. And it's, and then, you know, I think giving kids some agency helps a little bit. Yes, you I know? think exactly. It also kind of gets them, it gets them involved. If you can get a kid interested in learning to cook, you've started them down a path of such importance and such 
right. wonderful creativity and knowledge. They learn about physics. They learn about chemistry. They learn about mm -hmm. how not to hurt yourself while you're playing with sharp knives. Um, it's really valuable and it's use. It's really useful when you're dating. I think we're probably talking about kids who aren't at that age yet. None of the parents want to think about their kids dating right now, Ted. I, I promise you that. So sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> but I also think there's um, it teaches um, a kind of a hospitality and a, a kindness and community. And right now, I feel like we all need more community and kindness. And that idea of serving somebody food and passing a plate around and leaving enough on the plate for the next person, all of that is part of cooking. And and I, for me, that that really builds our family, uh, you know, kind of builds our, our family culture and makes us all feel good. And, you know, we sit down for dinner as often as we can all together. And we talk about, you know, we have a game called Rose and Thorn where we say, what was your thorn today? What was your hard thing? And what was your rose today? Or we pay, you know, three things, we play question games to get to know each other. But I think that's part of cooking as well as the feeding other people and sharing the food. So Oh, 100%. Um, I, I always like to say that I think cooks um, are people with great generosity, but who also really like applause. Well, that's true. <coughs> I'm joking. Oh, I'm sorry. What are you looking at? Um, now, you, to, speaking of applause, we have thousands of people waiting to see what you're going to do for a demo for us. Um, and oh. uh, yeah, so I, let's let's see what, what are you going to, you have a, this is, tell us why you thought this would be, this is a good thing for a kid to make. All right. Well, what are I'm you making? Gonna, I, I'm going to make a very simple dish that I make often in my house uh, that was originated by a rather well-known fast food restaurant um, who I'll try not to name. It's hard <laughs> because it's kind of in the name of the sandwich, but right. um, this is the this is the Ted McMuffin. Is that fair? <laughs> oh, no, I didn't call it that. that. Okay. You call you called it that. I didn't right. call it that. All right. But I think. So I think this is a good recipe to demonstrate for a couple of reasons. One, it's familiar to most of us. Two, there are ways you can make it with better ingredients that make a better product, which I think is a good thing to learn about cooking. Um, I mean, for example, I'm, I'm, so this, this McMuffin, I guess you'd call it, uh, it is an, a, an English muffin with a cooked egg on it, uh, a piece of Canadian bacon. This is boar's head Canadian bacon. It's much thicker than most Canadian bacons. Um, I've got great, you know, farm fresh, uh, farm raised um, brown eggs, which I've just cooked here. I like to cook mine sunny side up, um, which creates kind of a sauce that mushes and gushes all over the place and makes a mess, mm. which kids like. Um, mm -hmm. Kids might not like sunny side up, but uh, another way to do this, uh, to make a McMuffin sandwich is, sometimes I do this when I'm, on, when I'm in a rush, you can take a ramekin like this and spray it with cooking spray, Put it in the microwave. Definitely put a plate on top of it because the egg always explodes. Okay. Which is something else Good kids tip. would enjoy. That's yeah. true. Oh, Exploding egg muffins. Yeah. Well, if you put that in there without a cover, your microwave will be covered with egg. Okay. Um, pro but tip. Anyway, yeah, pro tip. Uh, well, pro because it's how I've suffered the consequences <laughs> more than once. But what I like to do is so I've got here some really great whole wheat English muffins from Wolferman's. Um, and you'll notice that a lot of the English muffins in the grocery store, particularly from leading brands, have just gotten scrawny, and Wolferman's are much thicker, so I appreciate mm. that a lot. I've got the Boar's Head Canadian bacon, which is, as I said, is thicker. It's also really nice quality, uh, and I've cooked myself a beautiful farm fresh egg just now, but what I can't do differently is this part. For me, it's just not... Okay, American cheese. American it's, cheese is the secret ingredient to a lot of happy dishes. It's true. People it think and that I, that cooks are like professional cooks are food snobs, but the American cheese plays an important role in our kitchens. Well, I don't eat this on anything else really, but if it's not on the McMuffin sandwich, it's not a McMuffin. Right. Um, my, my husband, when I make these things for him, he demands that I use this fancy Swiss and stuff, which is fine and also delicious, but not a McMuffin. It's mm -hmm. just not. Um, the, I don't put this on hamburgers or anything else. Just this. We so have a recipe I... on NYT cooking to, for ramen in which a, a slice of American cheese goes on it. And I would encourage you to consider expanding your American cheese repertoire to uh, that ramen recipe we have. But OK, of back all, to your demo. Thing, of all things I thought you were going to say to me tonight, that's not one of them. Um, <laughs> Amer American cheese ramen. OK. Um, it's probably great yeah. if you like it. 
So uh, here we have my sunny side egg. Can you, does this show? You can hold I'm it up a little closer to the camera so people can see it, push it, yeah. I'm used to having people help me with some aspects of broadcasting. It's no, so hard when you don't have your staff, isn't it? <laughs> right, I can get it closer. Okay. So what I'm gonna, cause this is an Yeah, that's lesson. better, yeah. You got it? Yeah. Okay, now here, here's the crucial moment. Okay. Oh, I put the, I did the English muffin upside down, sorry. That's okay. Oh, nice. Let's see right. the bite. Oh, wow, and, and, it, it's and it really soaked, it soaked right into the bun so well. Nice. I'm not sure how good, how good, I don't know how good my lighting is here, but here we go. Let's see. Ah, oh, the shot. It's good, mm. right? It's nice. Good. I it's want good. one. <laughs> Very nice. Very I nice. I, could, I wish I could serve you one. Ah, oh, <clears throat> the Ted McMuffin, ladies and gentlemen. Well done. I, well done. I didn't call it that. You did. I know. I did. I did. You can. <laughs> we have lawyers at the New York Times who can defend us from that, I'm sure. Yeah, certainly so. from my lawyers. Right, there you go. Um, and that is a simple dish that kids can do. We, I, I, you know, one thing that a lot of parents ask, and I, I see, um, I think this is a question from Alex from Kansas City who has a couple questions, but, um, oh no, this is, I don't know who's asking this, but um, knife handling skills with kids. And when kids come in to, ch to chop junior, I mean, have you seen some bad knife accidents on the set or, I mean, Oh, you're eating. Swallow. I took I'll a really big bite. I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Because I know for my kid, we started with a smaller, um, uh, in fact, our, uh, this was, I'm not going to plug this, but Rachel Ray um, had this little kids line for a while. I don't know if you remember the period when kids were, like it got cool to be a, um, a chef for Halloween and kids were dressing up like, and they still like Ina Garten or Rachel Ray. And then she came That's out fun. with this. Yeah, it was fine. And I know it's, it seems like so long ago now. I don't know what people are dressing up for as Halloween these days. But, but anyway, she had this little knife that was a little bit dull, but it was smaller for her hand and um, still worked. Like there's nothing worse than, you know, if you had a knife that's kind of dull and doesn't work. So I think you need to have a working knife. But she started with that and now, but it's still a little nervous about the bigger knives. So I don't know how, what is your experience? Do the kids come in with their own knives? Are you careful with knives on the set? Any tips on that? Uh, the, well, first of all, I, I want to stipulate that it's, I think, safer to cook with a sharp, it's more dangerous to cook with a dull knife than a sharp right. one, right. because your knife slips off of food and could slip onto you. Right. Um, right. The kids all vary. When, the, when the, the, the Trump Jr. contestants range in age from 9 to 14, so that clearly a lot changes during those years, most of them, many of them come with knives. Some of them don't have their own, and we can provide knives, um, but ours are definitely sharp. Um, mm -hmm. I, uh, I think I think we might use fewer knives on Junior than the, the adult chefs are allowed to have up to seven knives, but you don't need seven knives. Nobody, you, I mean, I've got way more than seven. Yeah, I was going to say me. you have some. You have a, a hell of knife collection behind you, there, friend. I'll I'll show you my favorite one. Okay. I, I I don't actually use it. I I bought this at a flea market in Ohio, um, on off of I seventy. I have I have a feeling it has some kind of agricultural purpose. Yeah. Wow. Hold that a little closer to the camera so we can see the serration on that. Huh. But it's got it's got a handle that looks like it's that like maybe the knife gets heated. Like maybe this yeah. is used for hooves or something. I don't All know. Right. Is if there's any of our um, any folks out there who know what that knife is for and you want to type in, in in the questions, that would be great. And then we'll figure oh, out what that please, knife is. So please who knows? We could what, crowdsource this. So. I, that one of my favorite things about social media is that a question like that usually gets answered when I yeah. post it, but no one was able to tell me what that's for. Huh, interesting. So you posted that, nobody knew. I mean, I found yeah. with my kid, we started with like a, some bananas that were soft and had them kind of practice, had her practice with bananas and that was easy. And, you know, so soft things that you can kind of, you know, that you don't, you know, you may waste a little food or have to put it in banana bread or something, but it's just a matter of like, you know, practice and practice and, and taking time to show them how to tuck their fingers in. And just like any other skill, you teach them to ride a bike, you can teach them to use a knife, you know, it's just kind of patience and, you know, having them cut something that they're going to want to then eat and cook. Cause I really feel like that again, that whole process, you know, um, just a quick thing. Cause I want to let, um, whoever asked that question, that was Canadian bacon in the Ted McMuffin. I don't want to leave you hanging on that. So, it, and you like was. a boar's head, you like a thicker one, right? Yeah, it's really, really nice Canadian bacon. Um, okay, good. Delicious. Um, but you can, also, you can also make other variations on this with, you know, just simple ham. I like smoked ham a lot. You can, okay. uh, 
You can put um, regular regular bacon is also quite delicious in this sandwich. Okay, um, there you go. Scrambled it is really, eggs, yeah. Sure. I mean, you won't get the mush. You won't get the this yolk sauce, but still. So, um, and let's see. Oh, <laughs> this is hilarious. So. Uh, my daughter's watching and she typed it. I think I'm getting, I think I'm getting like um, heckled by my own daughter on the questions here. She said, maybe the knife is made from metalworking. I can't imagine, oh. but thank you for asking. Okay. okay. Yeah, sure. there you go. Um, you never know. So we have a couple other questions. Uh, what do you do? And this is from Kelly. What do you do when mom and dad themselves are not adventurous eaters? Um, or good cooks like is there a way to so you're trying to like not pass on kelly your not very good cooking genes maybe you guys could take a cooking class together or you know get one of the online video um cooking schools and make it a family activity um that's one well idea. you know if they if we're ever allowed back out of our houses again i mean co cooking classes are so much fun i've always recommended them to people for a date especially of maybe the first or second date because you have a structured activity but you're close to each other you're doing things to you're doing this together you can see what you learn more about what skills your 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 mm -hmm. love interest has or does not have um and there aren't awkward moments of silence there's always something to talk about there's always there's someone leading a class i once took a class at the institute of culinary education uh, that was a cheese class which really just meant we ate a pound of cheese and drank wine for two or three hours. It was awesome. Mm. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I don't that's remember a thing about it. <laughs> <laughs> you probably remember the cheese. But yeah, I think that's, so I think that idea of cooking together like a class, if maybe you weren't, you know, if you weren't a good cook and, uh, and then you could do it together as a family, that helps. And then you won't have those awkward moments like you have with your teenager, which is regular on the regular. So, um, uh, and then. stuff. Too. I'm sure some of the online, yeah. I'm sure the online culinary education has its value as well. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially at a time like this. Yeah. And I think that's, it, it, I mean, if you look at Food Network and you look at the explosion of food shows, clearly it works for people. So tap into mm -hmm. that. Um, Kristen is asking, are there any, well, this kind of feeds into that, any meal tips for a picky teenager? Um, ah, I wrote a couple things down. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Out of sight, offset. Yeah. Okay. Um, you you did your homework, Mr. Allen. Awesome. Yeah, and then I printed it out and got printed on both sides, so I had to flip it over. <laughs> I'm glad that happens to other people. Okay. <laughs> I hate that. Yeah. Um, well, what I like to do, and I don't know if this addresses the pickiness. I mean, I think I think more important than recipes, if if you've got a kid who's giving you trouble about what you're serving, maybe there's a way to get the kid more involved in what you're choosing to serve. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of goes back to where we started at the beginning. Um, to be perfectly honest, there are some things that, that I'm not especially good at cooking. And maybe there are things that, um, um, as I said, you know, we, we, a lot, so many people grow up hating Brussels sprouts and that's probably because their parents boiled them in water for 30 minutes and leached all the flavor and nutrition out of them instead of what they should have done, which is to cut them in half and put them on an oiled sheet and roasted them in the oven where they get mm -hmm. browned and, and crispy parts um, and nutty nuttiness. Right. Whenever I think something's tasty, it's almost, I almost always use the word nutty. Yeah. Uh, but also yeah. there's also texture there. Um, if, if, if vegetables are the problem, one way to perk up a lot of them is the, the, the cheap and easy way is cheese, particularly Parmigiano. Mm. Um, and, you know, you shave that on top of anything from green beans to broccolini to broccoli to um, anything at all, it makes it better. Um, but aside from that, um, don't overlook the idea of using vinaigrettes on things mm. besides your salad. Right. I mean, so many vegetables are improved and, 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 in, and in restaurants, so many things are served in a vinaigrette, which puts acidity onto some, something that doesn't have acidity. It can, right. you can, it, it can put acidity and sweetness and mustard flavor. I, I've, I've taken to, when I, whenever I cook green beans, I toss them, as soon as they're done, uh, I toss them in Dijon mustard, mm. a lot of mm. it. I, I go through an absurd amount of Dijon wow. mustard. It's wow. my fa one of my favorite things in the world. And it's so delicious. Yeah. And, the, and, and, you, and, the, and 
No, and go it ahead. Doesn't add, it doesn't, un, it doesn't add much caloric content, I don't right. think. So just and Dijon, no extra olive oil or anything, just the Dijon. And the just hot. Dijon. Nice. That is, I that's the it. worth this whole thing for me. That's a great tip. A great tip. You should, you should try it. Yeah, it really is nice. And you know, vinaigrettes are kind of a great thing to have kids make too. And I know, again, I don't mean to keep plugging our site, nytcooking.com, <laughs> but um, <coughs> Julia Moskin has a great vinaigrette recipe that in a jar that, and you know, the, you make it in a jar and kids can make it, shake it up. That gives them something to do. And you kind of keep it in the fridge and you can kind of you know, use it or top it off. But I think having a kid make a vinaigrette and then having vegetables that they like to dip in and try and see if they got the seasoning right and they could put a little more salt and, mm -hmm. you know, anything that they can kind of tinker with or adjust and make their own is a good thing. And, um, you know, a, a vinaigrette in a jar is a, and then it can work wonders and maybe help them eat some vegetables they, they might not want to help. I have to show you something. <clears throat> Do you recognize this? <gasps> That's the old wishbone crew. Like, isn't that what like from the old wishbone it's, dressings or whatever uh, it was? Is wishbone, is a, that the brand? Good, it's, it's from Good, good seasoning. Seasons. Good Seasons, now, thank you. My mom gave me this when I was in college. I just bought a new one because the lid had worn out. Wow. The original lid had worn out. But this thing is great. I, I, and I didn't notice this until about two weeks ago. Right here it says, there's a V for vinegar. There's uh -huh. a W for water and there's O for oil. Wow. So the proportions are right there for you. And the lid is, and the opening is nice and large. So it's Lovely. easy to pour. Now this is not a good season's vinaigrette inside here, but the bottle is fantastic. I've always that's, loved this thing. That's a, that's a great tip. And that's just at the, at the supermarket yeah. or wherever. I have I not looked even, for that for a while. Huh. I threw away the seasonings packets. I don't need that. Okay. I, and I, do you I, put water in your vinaigrette though? Or is that just because of the, okay. Just for those I, following along at home, we're not suggesting water in your vinaigrette. But. No, I don't put water in my vinaigrette. I think the only reason that's there is because for the, the seasoning packet. packet that you put in is dehydrated right. and might need to be rehydrated. That's my guess. I like it. Yeah, that's I great. Love thing. I, love I love that. Another great tip. Um, okay, let's see some more questions. So um, Alex from Kansas City said uh, her son, Charlie from Kansas City, isn't particularly fond of meat. Any suggestions for an aspiring vegetarian in terms of getting protein and vitamins, et cetera. But his sister, Ellie, who's nine, who I hope you're watching, hi Ellie, loves meat and it makes it tough to, to cook for both of them. And apparently there's a lot of parents who are asking about kids who don't like meat. So, you know, you and I were of the generation where you had the protein and the starch and that, and we grew up at least for, um, you know, American Midwest kids like you and I are, that that's what we ended up eating. Um, are there kind of good meat substitutes or, or uh, are you cooking a lot with tofu? Do you have any tofu tips? Um, I, I, don't, I don't use tofu a lot. I like it, but I like it better when someone who knows what they're doing cooked mm -hmm. it for me uh, right. but that is you know I was uh, one of the things I was going to talk about is how 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 nice it is for the cook if the whole family eats one meal right because we're not, not a diner it's not the waffle house yeah it ain't the waffle house but obviously if somebody is trying to avoid meat and somebody can't have a meal without meat you, you you've hit an impasse um I, it's funny because we opened with my story about hating lima beans as a kid and now uh, uh I, I gave a Bon Appetit, I, I was presenting at the Bon Appetit Awards one year, uh, several years ago, and I got to give an award to Steve Sando, who is the owner of Rancho Gordo right. Beans. Right. Um, out in, I think it's somewhere in California. Yeah. Um, and I have grown to really appreciate dried beans, especially Rancho Gordo's beans are a little pricier than the ones you see at, in the supermarket. Um, but he, he encourages, he finds heirloom beans that have that nobody has that have, that, that that were in danger of extinction, and then has them grown and packages them beautifully, and then you know kind of charges you through the nose for them. Uh, but you can go to the grocery if you just buy regular goya beans or any kind of just dried beans are a, 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 an amazing, almost perfect source of protein. Right. Quinoa and quinoa also is an excellent source of protein, but I prefer beans. Right. And, um, you know, beans in the pandemic became like the it food of the, it's the it food of the pandemic. And people, and in fact, um, those uh, Rancho Gordo beans were hard to come by for a while because everybody yeah. was ordering them. Although it'll be interesting in a year to see how many beans are still on people's shelves. But, uh, but beans but they, and, oh, go ahead. They keep, they keep for a long time. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Uh, if I were in a situation like the scenario that, that this question opened with, it is not that difficult to 
prepare, to get your beans started, it's usually better if you soak them, but you don't have to. Uh, and then have two pots on the stove and one of them has ham and bacon in those beans and the other one does not. And you can find other ways to provide umami, that kind of meatiness that, uh, that gives you know, depth and serious flavor to a bean dish um, for, the, for the person who is vegetarian. Um, right. Right. And a lot of that can be done certainly with things like cumin and, and paprika and uh, other right. spices that have that earthy vibe. Right. And you can do kind of a, you know, with tortillas and maybe you want to add, maybe you have done a little pork shoulder and make a little carnitas thing. You can have the beans and the tortillas and the, um, you know, uh, some lettuce, vegetables, crema, whatever, and people can kind of make their own burritos and it, some can have meat, some cannot. And you can, you know, the beans will be a nice, you know, a nice um, addition in there. I think that's, I'm glad, I think that's, go ahead. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned tacos because what could be a, a better thing for kids? It, right. Talking about giving kids agency and involvement in their food, you know, make your own taco night with all the options arrayed before them and they can pick every and only the things that they want to put right. on there. And Love they it. can practice, they can chop the lettuce, they can do, they can help chop the things, they can grate grating cheese, kids, you know, they have to, you know, they, they, they need to learn the lesson about the knuckles on the grater, but they only, they need to only learn it once, trust me, <laughs> they do it once and then they become good cheese graters. But those sorts of things, and I, this is another um, reader who wrote about having a 21 month year old, a 21 month old um, Sugai, uh, I don't know where you're from. He has a 21 uh, year, 21 month old child, and God bless you for that. Good luck. Uh, who wants to do everything in the kitchen, and uh, they let him sprinkle things in pans, and you know, you know, mix and push buttons, that sort of thing. And was wondering if there's something that a young kid like that could make. And I, I keep thinking of like mashing potatoes or uh, mashing plantains or or bananas or something that they could mash and put into something else, but. You, you, you all aren't thinking of Chop Junior, the toddler edition, anytime soon. But I, I, I don't know. Uh, I that's doubt. an idea, million dollar uh, idea. We, you know what? We're all one, million, one idea away from never that's working right. again. That's right. But I think that maybe going back to your analogy of a, to showing a child how to use a knife by cutting a banana, you don't need a dangerously sharp knife to cut a banana. You can cut it with a table knife. Mm -hmm. In fact, you, you should cut it with a table knife. That's, what I, what, uh, that's a great idea. Some, so maybe a kid that you really can't, it's hard to hurt yourself with most table knives. They're just, yeah. mine are not sharp at all. Yeah. Um, maybe that'd be, I mean, that activity would end fairly quickly. Yeah. Um, and you might waste a few bananas, but. Um, banana bread. Yeah, pudding, banana <laughs> pudding. Banana pudding is a good one. My freezer is full. It's so full of bananas. Right. That almost, that, did, that went, surpassed their prime. But. Right. I know you're like, oh, put that in the freezer. This is, I think this is the, the, one of the eternal issues is all those bananas in our freezer because we always thought we were going to make banana bread. Although a lot of people, banana bread for a while in the early days of the pandemic, all the social feeds, I saw everybody was making banana breads and muffins and yep. then they graduated into banana scones. And, you know, I think baking is kind of a good thing with kids, but not long, like if, I found that if you make cakes with kids, that long baking time, depending on their age, their attention, they got these little spans of attention when they're little and that kind of payoff of the length of the time it takes to bake a cake is not as great. Although the frosting and that sort of thing is great. And I don't know, my, I came, that was working the other day and I came down and my kid was just making a pan of brownies almost just from memory. And I thought, okay, this is, the baking thing is, I don't know, it's, it's a fun way to do it. Let's hey, see, who that's, else is- That's good. Yeah, that's we good. always see, we have meal tips for picky teenagers. Well, here's Allison asking, any advice, <laughs> this is a good one, Allison, on how to stand my ground uh, when what they've prepared for dinner is, that what, that what she's prepared for dinner is what the family's gonna eat. So do you offer the backup op option? Or do you say, okay, we'll just eat some peanut butter so at least they have something in their stomach? And I, I mean, I know families who, their kids for like three years ate nothing but quesadillas and you know they were fine they grew up and they're fine and so is when do you when do you make that fight and when do you you know acquiesce um, um i uh, i read a great piece in on epicurus uh, about that issue and one uh one of the writers family uh, she and her husband have a policy where you know we're cooking one dinner if you don't want to eat it that's okay you can have toast and then they would they would toast the toast and put it on the same plate as the existing dinner. And at, at least half the time she wrote, the kid would end up eating the dinner. Interesting. I thought that was, I thought that was pretty smart. I think allowing too much confrontation to come into that kind of situation is only gonna make 
it, it could snowball. It could make dinner a problem every single day. Whereas something as simple as that could turn it, could kind of sneakily get the kid to actually eat the food you cooked in the first place. That that's is, big. that's genius. That is yeah, genius. There's wisdom there. And, and there could be, pe pe there could be peanut butter on the bread or, you know, butter and jam or whatever. But, right. But I don't think they should get to like order another meal of their liking. I think, okay, you're not eating that. You're getting peanut butter. I mean, it's, um, you know, it's sort of like if you were at the, the dorms or if you went to college and were at a dorm or wherever where you, if you didn't like what they were eating, there was always a jar of peanut butter and bread. And that's, <clears throat> you know, it's just the way it's going to be. Well, I mean, like let's, prison, raise a glass. Right? <laughs> let's raise a glass to the, to the parents uh, of America and, and the world for heaven's sake, 18 years worth of providing at least two squares a day, if not lunch too. I mean, the people who are able, that is so much work, so much planning, so much need of inspiration and imagination. Mm -hmm. I respect that deeply. That is yeah. a Yeah, that cooking dinner. I mean, I grew up, there were seven people in my family and every, you know, you cook in a meal for at least two meals a day for seven people. That's, I don't know how they do it. Do you think we've returned to the table? I know um, you and I have both been in the food writing, the food game for long enough, <coughs> excuse me. So, you know, for a while we were all just eating, you know, fast food or restaurants and, and there was this movement to get back to the table and to cook together. And, and I think it's really paid off because we see how many, what a food forward generation couple generations we've raised from that but do you think we're we're back at the table and do you think the pandemic has underscored that at all i i think we have been going back <laughs> we've been we've been back at the table for several decades now uh it is only it, it is it has only increased people's interest in cooking and cooking real food and getting better at cooking uh and cooking with friends um and i think it's and the pandemic of course can only increase it i think we have ordered a little bit of food, but the vast majority of it, we've cooked it ourselves because it feels safer, frankly. Mm -hmm. And I remember the first few times we ordered pizza and other things from delivery restaurants. We have great restaurants in Clinton Hill, Brooklyn, where I live. Um, the bag would come. We had paid electronically, but we would find ourselves, okay, one person grabs the bag and takes it to the kitchen and puts it on the floor and lifts the parcels out of the bag and puts them on the counter and opens them. And then, this, and I, then that person washes their hands while the second person takes the tongs and lifts the food out of it. And at a certain point, we're kind of past that at this point. I think it just feels absurd and, uh, and we haven't gotten zapped yet, but it's hard to know how safe to be and it's impossible to be perfectly safe. So mm -hmm. we're just trying to do the best we can. Right. Let the record show though that it, nobody ever, uh, it's never hurt anybody to wash your hands more than you used to. Right. It doesn't hurt that. So well, let's talk a little bit about spice. And because uh, we have another question from Anonymous. Um, how do you get kids to try different seasonings and flavorings and spice? And I, you know, I know you did not put the hot sauce on your Ted McMuffin, but oh, you, do like a, you do like a little hot sauce on it, right? Is that my understanding? Yeah, yeah I have a whole row, uh, a whole shelf in my freezer door that's mm -hmm. nothing but that. What do you I think about like, sense. you know, I think kids come to heat in a way. I always think it's sort of like when they learn to read or speak, it just comes to them at some point they like heat. Or if you, you know, if you're from a culture where heat was part of the food from early on and kids are, in, you know, introduced to it early, you eat, eat more heat. I mean, I, you know, I'm trying to think about, you know, how do you, how do you get a kid to like different flavors or maybe tastes from cultures that they weren't raised in if you want to try to teach them to like certain things is there do you think repetition sneaking it in uh or just let them kind of come to it i don't think the sneak well first of all i don't think it's really very important whether a kid likes spicy food or not but i think it's very important and, and a major opportunity for education to introduce kids to different kinds of cuisines so what if, you know, you could do, go so far as to take a world map and throw a dart at it, or you could spin a globe and close your eyes and poke, but how, why not make, just like traveling is important, why not allow your kids the opportunity to, hey, you haven't had Thai food, you should try it. Let's try Chinese, let's try Me Mexican, let's try something south of the border that is not Mexican. Mm -hmm. but, um, India has at least, and I'm not an expert, but I, I've read that India has at least 18 different, entirely specific cuisines within, from there's Goa, Goan food, which is extremely spicy, mm -hmm. 
And there's all these other, well, India is a vast country. Think about the diversity of food that we have in our country, let alone uh, setting aside the food that came from other places. Um, I think kids should be encouraged to try these things. I guess the tougher question for me is what if the kid only wants buttered noodles every day? I mean, there's right. nothing wrong with buttered noodles and maybe once a week is fine or a couple times a week. There are, there are ways though that you could mix up those buttered noodles and make, well, tonight we're going to have kind of like Mexican buttered noodles or, mm -hmm. try, you know, just chew your choices of vegetables and, and maybe additional spice that you put in, whether it's hot spice or whether it's just flavored spice. Uh, right to try to just encourage a love of variety, I think, right, and, and, a, right. and a curiosity, a curiosity. Right, right. So a kid who maybe has never grown up, like if you're, you know, in a culture that's not eating a lot of cheese, you might start to make them an egg muffin with cheese on it and see how they, you know, kind of start into it. We just have a couple minutes left, but um, some people were asking, do you have any books that you like for cooking with kids or um, other cookbooks even that you are want to recommend right now for families that are looking to cook more? Is there anything that you're interested in or want to suggest? Uh, uh, I don't actually. I have a whole, I have a giant cookbook problem. I have a whole dining okay. room packed with them, but the, the, most of them are not kid oriented. I'm sorry. I should have done, I should have looked that up. No, I know. I tripped you up. It's that, it's that sneaky journalism kind of question. There, there you I'm go with sorry. that. There that you gotcha, go. That, I, I will gotcha say, um, I know, see, it's that gotcha. It's that fake news. I know we're getting you. Um, I, but I know Alice Waters has a simple cooking book that is that she did. It's not necessarily for kids, but it's um, for people who don't know how to cook and uh, the art of simple cooking. And it's, it's, you know, and there are some other sort of beginner cookbooks that I think kids I think sometimes they can get too cute and kiddie and the kids cookbooks are like, put M&Ms on your cupcake. But I think any sort of simple book that is um, designed for new cooks is a great idea for for people who want their kids to cook. Because, you know, I, I don't think we need to talk down to kids or cook down to them. They're, you know, they're, they're pretty smart, come to find out. I can, I, can, I can tell you about one reference I saw while I was sort of prepping for this uh, that was called Cooking With Kids. I'm pretty sure it's cookingwithkids.com that just had recipes from all over the world. And I don't right. think they were I don't think they were oversimplified or anything. Uh, and mm -hmm. the, the, I mean, the range of ideas they had was very, very international. All right, great. I'm sure that uh, could steer you to cookbooks too. And I'm sorry to say, I've had such a great time with you, but um, we're coming to an end of our time. And uh, yeah. I just want to thank you so much um, for showing up in your kitchen and, and cooking for us. It's been great. And I want to thank everybody who's tuned in and, um, and I hope you got some good ideas and some motivation to all cook together. And if there are any kids watching, try to do the dishes for your mom and dad and your parents because sure. we get sick of that. Um, uh, and just a reminder to everybody, this is part of a, a slew of digital events that the Times is producing to help um, readers navigate the world as we know it now, uh, the brave new world that we're in. Um, the next one we have in our parenting series is on July 15th, and that'll be at eight o'clock too. And you can join, this ought to be great, join fellow parents from the Times and some special guests uh, for a night of comedy and conversation as you discuss what it's like to parent during this time, which I uh, trust me is going to be hilarious. Um, so if you want to find out more about the other live events we have, you can go to timesevents.nytimes.com. It's timesevents.nytimes.com. Finally, um, thank you to all of our subscribers. You're the reason that we do all this, and um, we certainly uh, couldn't do it without you. Um, you make our work possible. And thank you to all the crew who's behind the scenes who does all this hard work, um, and you make my job a lot easier. So look forward to doing it again. And Ted, thank you so much. Can I get one last thing in? Heck yeah. We were talking about one idea away from never having to work again. What, why don't yeah. we take this thing? Let's take this thing to series. We'll be famous. Yeah, you and me. Well, this is how we're going to make our money. This will be great. Okay. Oh, we'll have your agent call my agent. It'll be great. I'll do that. Ted, we'll I'll talk. I'll do that. Okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Thank Thanks. You, Thank, Thank you, everyone. Everybody.